Hey, good morning, everyone, and thank you for all for attending the Understanding Your fi Federal Financial Reporting. Um, so we know some of you have some questions about how do you figure out this financial reporting system? Because again, it's one of those requirements for your grant. So today we have Tanya Thomas, and she is going to provide us with an overview and a walkthrough to kind of help you understand um, to fill out your financial report. She comes from the, now I want to make sure I get this right, Tanya, for you. The Program Support Center for the Financial Management and Procurement Portfolio with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm going to give the space and time for her to introduce herself as well as present to you today. Um, so thank you so much, Tanya, for um, being with us, and I'll let you take control of the screen. Good morning. Thank you so much. Um, I am Tanya Thomas. I go by TJ, and I'm with um, Program Support Center with Payment Management Services, and I'm with the Office of Director, and it's my pleasure to go over the Federal Financial Report with you. So I am going to start sharing my screen. Um, as far as material is concerned, um, I provided um, the material to ACF a few minutes ago so they can get you the material um, after the session. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. So give me one second. the screen. Okay. So again, we're going over the federal financial report for ACF grantees. So just a little agenda. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit of background, the goals. Then we're going to go through the federal financial report module. And then I just do a live demo and then open up for whatever questions you may have. So just a short background, the standard form 425 or the federal financial report data is reported to different systems. So if you're doing quarterly reports, they are reported completely in the payment management system, as well as if you're doing semi-annual. For annual reporting, they may be completed in multiple systems. So you may be completing your annual report in the payment management system, and ACF may be requiring you to complete it in another system as well. As far as the government execution-wide objectives, um, this was put into place to reduce the recipient burdens, and this is based off of Government Data Act, Section 5 Grants Pilot, um, the OMB Memo, Section 1824, and also the President's Management Agenda. So what is the goal? The goal of the federal financial reporting is for grant recipients to report through the payment management system so it helps um, them to make sure that we have your all your reports in one system. So it's to improve the consistency with one single source of reporting. It also allows PMS to share financial data to other systems. It also assists in grant monitoring and closeouts to make sure that is done in a timely manner. And it also helps to reduce expired award payments. So those that have passed the um, liquidation period and it also helps the awarding agencies um, when we do have expired award payments and we'll contact them to ask them if they can approve the payment and then they will extend the liquidation period if necessary and then I also help to eliminate a lot of payments that hit the holding file. So currently, these are all the agencies that are utilizing the federal financial report in our system. And so now we're going to touch bases on the FFR access. So again, everyone is required to have access to payment management system, and you must request access. So if you have someone new, everyone must request access to the payment management system. So if you do not have access or somebody's new coming on board, you will just go to our webpage and um, request access. 
And again, if you resubmit your um, submission, it may take up to four business days. Even if you currently have access and you need um, to change your profile, the same thing, you will update your profile and um, the access may take up to four business days to process. So I can tell you, we just had this um, for quarter ending December 31st because the reports were due on or before January 30th if that was your report due date. During the end of the month and end of the quarter, end of the fiscal year, we get triple the request. So it may take a little longer than four business days, but um, just to let you know that it may be a delay, but other times we try to get them moving as quickly as possible and process them um, immediately. So on our homepage, we always ask you to make sure if you see any information on the red, on the, sorry, the pink bar that you read it. But so we do have, when I talked about your access information, so we always have grant recipient information there. Um, we do have a drop down from the drop down menu grant recipient. There is a title that says FFR information. So you can always go there to read additional information and then user access, whether you're updating your privileges or as a new individual, you will go to the user access tab. And this is how the user access tab will look. You can do a new user. If someone leaves your organization, we ask you to deactivate them from the system. You can check the status of your request as well. And then we also have instructions. Please be mindful Everyone that needs access to the payment management system must request their own access. So we give access at individual levels, not at organization levels. So everyone has to be assigned their own PMS user ID and password. So here is the screen as far as access level. So you need to make sure it says federal financial report, whether you're doing view only, if you're a preparer only or certifier, or if you're doing both. PMS does not dictate which one you are responsible for doing. It is up to your organization whether you're doing separations of duties or that individual can be both your preparer and certifier. So make sure you have access and you check your access. If you already have access and then realize something is not right, then make sure you go under the, from your dashboard, go to menu, account maintenance, and then select update privileges. From there, you can go back to the screen I just showed you and make your selections. Or if you don't have access to that specific PMS account number, please make sure you add it to your profile. So now let's get into the federal financial report module. So for the next couple of screens, I'm going to go through just briefly the screens, and then we're going to get into the actual demo, and then I'm going to give you some helpful information um, regarding the FFR. So from the dashboard, when you first log on to Payment Management System, you are automatically routed to what we call the dashboard. And from the dashboard, you can go to the top left and hit Menu, and you will have the link to federal financial reporting. So you will click there and you'll see the next screen. So you will see we do have an FFR grantee user guide. And then you would click on federal financial report. That would take you to the federal financial report screen. From this screen, you have several options. You can um, search by your payee account number, your federal grant ID number, and when I say your federal grant ID number, that is the grant document number that's in the payment management system. So if you ever use the inquiries in PMS, in PMS it says grant document. That is what that is as far as the federal grant ID number. You can do reporting periods, whether it's all or current period. You can also search by reporting status. Report is available to be, to be completed. Whether the awarding agency has rejected your request whether you have started your report and have not submitted it. If you wanted to see all the reports that's already been approved. Also, you can check to see if any reports are delinquent as well. And you can search by agency ID. So um, from the drop down menu, if you have access to it, you will see ACF. So you can select ACF. If you do not enter any data at 
all, then whatever you have access to as far as PMS account numbers, it will bring up every FFR that's available to you under your profile. So if you don't enter anything. So once you make your um, selections into your criteria, then you're gonna uh, click on the blue search button. And here is gonna bring a sample that I shown here. So it brought me up everything. And here I did a search as I wanna see everything under ACF. So it brought me all of these items that are uh, for ACF. If you notice on your screen, anything that you are delinquent will show in pink. So delinquent means you did not submit that report on the before the due date. So your first column will be your PMS account number. The second column is your federal grant ID number, and that is the grant document number in the payment management system. Of course, the third column will have agency and you will see Department of Health and Human Services and then ACF. Then the report type, whether your report is a quarterly one, a semi-annual or final, or if you have to do an annual report. Your reporting period end date, whatever the end date for that quarter. So right now we're currently on the quarter ending December 31st, 2022. And reporting period due date. So it will have your due date here. It will also give us the submit date, the date your report was submitted and your report status. So earlier I talked about your different report status, whether well, report is available to be completed, um, report submitted, so report certified pending agency approval, um, warning agency approval, uh, you might have one that says warning agency rejection. Of course, if it's delinquent, we do have the little key and you'll see the little red buttons with the little asterisk um, exclamation uh, mark in the middle of the red circles. And then action. So um, the action buttons you will actually see is the first one that looks like a notepad and then the print function. So you can ignore the third, the third one on the um, far right, because um, this is actually my screen. So you do not have that three, what I call a three uh, bar. You will not see that three bar as a grantee. So basically you will have the notepad functionality is how you review your reports and then your print functionality. Also, there is a group functionality. So at the top, you, it says group action. So if you need to do like four reports, you can use the group action key um, to do all the reports. And I will go over that when I do the live demo as well. So this is your search results screen. So the first thing you would do is select the uh, grant you wish to work on, select the notepad, and then start your reporting. So here at the top, you will have your different tabs. And when I go through the live demo, I will go through your tabs. So you will always start with preview reports. And the first section at the top will give you the federal um, information as far as the agency, um, the organization information, DUNS, EIN, and um. Um, recipient account number most times is your account number. So now instead of DUNS, you may see your UEI number instead. Also, if you see, if you ever get the um, message, UEI does not exist, that means either we do not have that data in the payment management system or your, your um, UEI went inactive during that period and you need to make sure that you update your UEI information or you re-register your UEI information in SAM because you must be active. Um, you must have an active UEI, okay? So this is how the screens will look. If anything from sections one through five is incorrect, then uh, we pull the data directly from PMS 
um, regarding um, the grant number, the recipient organization, because we do sometimes get that, uh, well, my organization information is, is incorrect. We pull in whatever we have in our database. So if your information is incorrect, the first thing you need to do is to go to sam.gov and check the data that's there. Once you check it, inform your grants officer or grants management specialist at ACF and let them know you have an update in if it's the organization's name, um, address, your UEI. Let them know you have a change and they will submit that change in the payment management system. It will route to PMS for review and release. So that's how that data gets updated. For the next part, uh oh, did I skip part? No, no. So the next part, six through nine. So this information is being filtered from um, grant solutions. So therefore, when we get that data file, we're they're letting us know the report type, um, the budget periods, and the report end date. If the report type or your budget end date, you say is incorrect, you need to contact ACF, the grants officer and grant, or your grant matches specialist. Let them know the data is incorrect. PMS, we do not um, populate that data. We receive that data from grant solution. The next couple of fields, section 10. So this is a cumulative report. So you're reporting your cumulative data. For cash receipts, depending on the type of report, um, depends on whether those fields are available to you. So if you have to do, um, what to say, a monthly quarter, sorry, monthly quarter or semi-annual um, report, 10A is pre-populated based off of the payment. So we're pulling that data from your actual cash drawdowns. So uh, for those report types I just mentioned, even though we pre-populate them, the field is editable, okay? So for, if it's your annual, whether it's a budget or final, a budget annual or a project final, we pre-populate that data, but you are not able to edit those fields and they will be grayed out. For your cash disbursement, we are pulling the same data as your payment. Since HHS no longer um, required to do the federal cash transaction report. So for your disbursement, it matches, this should match exactly the same as your cash receipt. Cash disbursements for your monthly, quarterly, and semi-annual reports, even though we pre-populate them, they are editable. However, for your annual, whether it's a budget final or a project final, even though we pre-populate the data, it is not editable. So 10C is a calculation, which is just A minus B. So we're going to go to the next section, the federal expenditures of unobligated balance. So 10D is auto-calculated, and you cannot edit that, whether it's your monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, or annual reports, whether it's the uh, budget final or the project final. 10D pulls from the authorization that's in the payment management system. So if you feel the authorization is incorrect, go and use your um, grantee inquiry, our APEX, your APEX reports to see what is what PMS is showing for that grant authorization. So we're pulling 10D from what has been authorized in the payment management system. 10E, you're going to enter your federal share of expenditures and also your federal share of unliquidated obligations. 10G and H are auto-calculated based off the data you entered on 10E and F. The recipient share. You would include the recipient share if you, uh, if you have it. So for AC. F was it 10I? 
So for your total recipient share, so these are pre-populated. If matching percent exists, NPMS. If it doesn't present, um, um, if it's not there, it will probably be zero. However, whether it's your, it doesn't matter what report type you have, those fields are editable on 10i for your total recipient share. So J, you will enter the data if you're required to. And K is also a calculation. And for K, it should not be a negative. You're not allowed to submit a negative on that total field. Your program income. So if you're required to have this, um, this um, data, then you will enter it. And this is based off your terms and conditions and what's stated in your notice of grant award. And O is, uh, is a calculation based off of the information you enter in L, M, and N. If you have indirect expense rate, you will complete this section, section 11. One of the things we do want you to know is make sure you check how you're entering your rate, your, where you're putting your decimal point, because depending on how you enter it would give you a different number. So um, for example, if it's 8%, 8% is not 8.00, 8% will be 0.08, okay? At the bottom of the form in section 12, if you have any, additional information you want to convey to your grants officer, you will enter that data in section 12. One thing I do want you to note, depending on if uh, for indirect expense rate, um, if, you, if it's only two lines allowed, then you can enter additional information in box 12, or you can also attach any document and we're gonna go over the document tabs as well when we do the live demo. So prepared by, if you are the prepared based off of what you had requested as far as your access, then you will prepare the uh, form. There will be your name under the drop down menu and the rest of the data that's on the form will populate. Once you um, select that, you will hit the submit button and it will route to the certifier and the certifier would do the same certification from the drop down menu. They will select their name and hit submit. Now, again, I stated if prepare, if you are both the preparer and the certifier, then you're able to edit the data. However, if you're doing separations of duty, so I'm the preparer and then my supervisor is the certifier. If my supervisor, um, as a certifier and sees there's uh, information that is not accurate, they have to inform the preparer. Only the preparer can edit the report. If you have certification privileges only, you are not able to change any data once the preparer has um, submitted it. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna do um, a live demo. But before I do the live demo, I'm just gonna finish the, um, the PowerPoint um, screens. So we do have um, manuals and reports and I will show you them once I do the live demo. So if you haven't used the reports in our system, um, I encourage you to do so. One of the reports is our grantee inquiry report. And that will provide you with a lot of data regarding your grants. We also have the APEX manual, so you can see how the reports work. And also we have other user guides as well. Um, guides regarding inquiries, um, the FFR, and your guides for your APEX manual. And this is just our information as far as PMS our hours of operation and when PMS is closed due to a federal holiday 
And I know our next federal holiday is in about a week and a half on President's Day. And for as far as contact, if you have any questions, you can contact our help desk, whether it's by phone or by email. You can also do a ticket online. Also, you're able to uh, contact your grants, I'm sorry, your PMS liaison accountant if you have general questions as well. As far as, uh, and I mentioned earlier about some of the fields, depending on which field it is, if it's missing, if you're missing reports, if your due date is wrong, if your section from one through nine is not populating correctly, then you must contact your grants officer or grant management specialist, who, um, whichever one is stated on your notice of grant award. Again, we're getting that data from their grant system. So PMS um, cannot change that data. So if it's 10A and B or 10D, then yes, contact us and we can look into that issue for you. All right, so I'm gonna go back. So give me a second while I um, set up for a live demo. Okay, so this is your dashboard. So on your dashboard, and can everyone still see the screen? Or do I need to reshare again? I need to make sure. Um, Because I don't see my little red button. So let me reshare. So give me one second. Let me reshare it again. So I can make sure you can see the screen. We, we can see it. Okay, thank yes. you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right, so this is the dashboard. So when you log into payment management system, we you will always land on the dashboard. Your dashboard will tell you how many reports you are delinquent and how many reports are ready to prepare certify. You can get to your FFRs two different ways. From your dashboard, depending on what you want to look at, if you want to look at the, the Lincoln reports, you just click on actions. If you want to see the ones that's ready to prepare, you click on the little um, book under actions. Under the menu, and we talked about menu earlier, here is your APAX reports. So here, if you need to look up information, you have your grantee inquiry. And for the APAX reports, if you have not used them, you're able to download data to an Excel spreadsheet. Here is your federal financial reporting. We also have your user guide here. And so now let's go to our federal financial report. So we're gonna click here. And again, you can enter whichever data. So I'm just gonna enter my PMS account number because this is the only thing I want to work on. And I talked about agencies. So depending on what you have access to, you under the agencies, you can select your agency that you wish to work on as far as your FFRs as well. So I'm gonna enter my payee account number and I'm just gonna do search. So I can go down here and see how many reports um, that are, I have done, I have 19 reports so far. Everything I've submitted has been approved. So if I wanna see all of them, I see one report that has not been submitted. I have one report here that's down here that was submitted and it's still waiting for awarding agency approval. So I always say we get this call, we get these calls a lot. Um, I can't do my payment request because the awarding agency hasn't 
um, approve my FFR. Um, ACF has not informed us um, that payment should be stopped because you have not completed your FFR. So they will get to your FFR and approve it in their time. But if you have issues or you need to contact them, then you can just contact them directly and ask them when they're going to approve your report. Okay, so PMS, we don't do any stopping of payments for ACF if your report has not been approved and if your report has not be, been, if your report is delinquent. Um, if if, a, if there is a need to stop your payments because of delinquent reports, then ACF would notify the liaison accountant directly. So for your tabs, you can um, change your tabs, which are the way by uh, clicking on them. So if I wanted to see the most recent quarters first, I changed and you can see how it changed. When I talked about earlier, I talked about your group actions. So under here is the group action. So say if I wanted to do, only wanted to do, this one only have one, but if I wanted to print a couple of these that's already been approved, if I go to group actions, I can do a group print. So you would just click on it. If I want to do a group download, you just select it here. If I wanted to do certify, if my reports weren't submitted and I have like four or five that I selected, I can hit certify and I can enter all the data at one time. So that is your functionality for group actions. So let's go and do our semi-annual report. So you're going to go to the review screen. It says review. You're going to click there. And again, you'll see your information. So your tabs, you have your report tab is where you're going to enter the data and we'll come back. You have your report details tab. Your report details tabs, the first one lets to know the report, the account number, the information. The so once it's prepared, it'll have the prepares information. Once it's certified, it has the certifier information. And once the awarding agency approves it, in this case, um, ACF, once they review it and approve or reject it, it will have the approver um, or the rejector um, information here along with their comments. Status history. So one thing I noticed here, it says report available to com be completed. It says web service. That means, again, I talked about when we get your um when we generate the reports, we're generating the reports based off the data that we receive from ACF grant system. So in this case, from the web service from Grant Solutions. So we're getting, uh, we're populating your FFR based off the data that we receive. And this is the date that we receive uh, that data. Documents, you can upload any document to support. Um, we do PDFs, words, and I believe Excel as well. So you can upload your documents um, to support anything as far as I talked about your comment section about 12. If you need to report additional indirect expense rates, then you can always submit, have an attachment here. If you had to revise a report, we always keep a revision. So once if, for instance, if your report was submitted and then ACF rejected it, you will see the initial report submitted. And then when you submit the rejection, the rejected report, you will see it, you will see the second submission as well. So we always keep all your history of your reports when you're submitting. Also, if we send out notifications, you will also see any type of notifications that's here and it will be under this tab. Your all detail tabs is just the combo. And in the future, you would just see your all details tab. You won't see the individual tabs. Um, in the future, we're working on it where it should only probably say prepare report and all details tab, but you will see the individual section. So let's go ahead and prepare our report. I already talked about sections one through nine. Remember, if any of this 
uh, the information is incorrect for your budget periods, um, the, the report type, the due date, again, go back to your grants office, grants management specialist, and let them know, well, this uh, you feel that this information is incorrect because they have to go back to grant solutions and do what they need to do so that data file can come back to PMS and we update that information. So remember, this report is a semi-annual. Because it's not a final, your, as long as the box are white, you are able to edit that data. On your finals, you cannot edit the data. So even though we populate this information, then you are able to edit it. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so even authorized amount, the little recalculate button, sometimes depending on if the date if a new funding was entered at a certain time. Then if you click the recalculate button, it will recalculate the authorized amount. You enter your total share of expenditures. And then you can enter any of your unliquidated obligations. And then it'll also calculate G and H there. If you're required to have recipient share, you will enter it. If not, you'll just enter zero. If you're required, and again, if you contact payment management, just to let you know, for PMS, the liaison, the liaison staff, we only can assist you as much as we can. We can assist you with 10 A, B, C, and D. And expenditures will just ask you, what is your expenditures for this grant? Because we do not get a copy of your notice of grant award, nor your terms and conditions, we do not know what's required of you. So you have questions regarding what you're supposed to enter in um, your recipient share program income and direct expense rate, you must contact your grants officer. So again, you will enter your data. And again, anything that's opened, is editable. Also be mindful of how you enter your percent because depending on what you enter, okay? So it will recalculate for you. Again, you can enter your remarks here. And if you are prepared from the drop down menu, you're going to select your name. And I'm just going to enter comments so you can see how it works on the screen. Um, all right. And I'm going to take my rate out. And if you noticed here, you only allow two indirect expense rate on the screen. Again, if you have more, you can either enter it in the remarks box or attach a document. So as I stated earlier, the, this section here is pre-populated because it's pulling from the individual that actually um, is preparing the actual report. So here you will hit submit once everything is done. And the system does have validations. So here, I guess I met all my validations. I'm okay. And then now you need to go here. I am both the preparer and the certifier. So because I have both, then I need to certify my reports and hit certify. So now it's been certified. So if I go back, to the page and let's update it, uh, search. And if you notice here, now I've certified my report and it was submitted today. If for any reason uh, your report was rejected or you made a mistake for some reason, you have to go back and click review 
and at the top and the bottom, it says edit report. You can click on edit report and all the fields will reopen again for you to complete. And then what you would do is just make your um, updates and resubmit your report. So that is your whole entire report for FFR. So at this time, um, I guess I can take any questions or issues. Now I didn't, let me see, I didn't have a final. Let me see if I can find a final for you. So let me, give me one second and see if I can do a final report. Cause remember I told you your annual, semi-annual quarterlies, um, if you have to do monthly, all those fields are editable. Your final, or um, certain fields are not editable. So let me uh, see if I can do a final for you. So give me one second. And let's see if I can get a final. So you can see. Okay, so I can go straight there to delinquent reports here, or I can just go to federal financial report, put in my account number, and then look for, say if I wanted my report type as a final, I can just go look for my final report and is ready to be completed. So here's one here. And so you can see for this one, for your finals, I talked about cash receipt and cash disbursement. You cannot change this. So anything that's shaded out, because this is a final, you cannot uh, make that change. Now I can tell you here, if for any reasons you need to return funds because maybe you're waiting for a refund to post, do not submit your payment request until your refund has posted. So once it's posted, then you can go back and hit the recalculate key to update the data. So here, and one thing is 10E, so if this is your authorized amount is 250 and this is your final report, you only did 227 on your final. So that means there is a difference here. And that means the um, ACF will um, de-obligate the unused balance. So again, also, if you do not report, so... And if this is a final, so say I don't have zero, I don't have this, this, nor this, and I prepare my report, you will get an error message. So we do have validations in payment management system. So for this validation, it tells you that for 10A and B and E, based off of what I reported, let me move this up. Based off what I reported, I reported more expenditures than what I received cash for. So PMS will not allow you to submit our FFR if 10E does not match your A and B. So in this case, I said I had uh, what, about $2,500 more expenditures. So I need to either to um, request my funding, wait for it to uh, get to my bank the next business day, go back to my report, hit the re recalculate key so that it will match and then submit my reports. Also, if you only spent 200,000 and I submitted the report, again, this would tell me that, okay, what you're telling me that 
you spent 200,000 of the 227, 500. That means you're planning to return funds. Until you return those funds and it's posted in the payment management system, you will not be able to submit your report. So please remember on your final, A and B and E must match exactly. Oops. <laughs> okay. So everything matches. So now I can certify my report and submit it. And then if I can go to the reports details tab. So reports detail tab, see my prepare. I didn't have any comments. My certifier didn't have any comments, so I can see that information here. And on the status history, it'll show you. So I know that um, the data we received was from web serve through our web through the web service from Grant Solutions. The preparer prepared the report, and the certifier also certified the report. So that's my status history. I didn't have any documents attached. I have not revised the report and I have not received any notification. So if I went back to my page, then I can see the status. So I wanna see everything report certified, pending agency approval. Then you can see I have these two reports here that are ready for the agency. So that is um, the review of your FFR. So I will, um, at this time, if you want me to, I do my best to answer questions or um, comments, I can do them at this time. Can you, okay, somebody said, can I show you how to change access? Yes, I can. So if for any reason you need to update, if you go to menu, go to user account maintenance and update privileges. So while I'm here, update contact information. So say I'm new and Michael is leaving. So Michael, this is Michael's access and I'm new. You can, Michael cannot access his account. So this is his account. He cannot access, use this account and change the name and the telephone number. We know that the ID that comes in is not um, mine, it's not TJ's. So please, when it comes to user contact, this is only used if you have a change in your contact information, please do not use it to try to get somebody else access because we know this is the user ID. We know who we assigned it to. When it comes to PMS, we're going to reject it and say your TJ needs her own account and must submit. Okay. So to update your profile, you go to user account maintenance, update privileges. So here, if you need to add a new PMS account number, you add it. Make sure your organization name is um, exactly how it is in the payment management system. Because if not, we're going to reject it. You will enter that information, whether it's your PMS EIN or your core EIN. The PIN number is without, um, like the letter on the end is without the P, the B1, or the G. The PAN is everything. So whether you have a five-digit PAN or a seven-digit PAN, it's with the B or the P. Now, like the B1, P1, or just the P, that's your PAN. So if you need to remove any access, if you click, uh, click on a line, click remove, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to remove that line? That's how you will remove. Then at the bottom, you make your selection. This is how you will update. Um, say you're not, no, um, your organization decide they want to do separations of duty. 
So you're no longer the prepare, you're the certifier. You would just uncheck it, submit, um, enter your supervisor's name. So you must um, provide your supervisor's information unless you are the highest person in your organization, meaning you're the president, a CEO, a co-founder, founder. So if you report to someone, you must put that information there. They do not have to have access to the payment management system. They will receive an email with a link to approve your request. So I always tell um, the grantees, they uh, they might say, oh, I didn't get my request um, like within five days. I'll, and they say, and I, we can check to see where it is. And they'll say it's waiting supervisor approval. Um, make sure you tell your supervisor to check their spam or junk folder um, to see if the, the email request was routed to them. So once you enter uh, your that data, you make your updates, you click submit. And then, um, sorry, do the certification box first, hit submit, and then it will route through the system. Okay, that's how you would change any access you need. Okay. Um, so Michael, I hope that answered your first question. Okay, how to add a new award. You do not add awards. So for a grant, if you're talking about adding like a grant, um, grant information, that is the responsibility of the awarding agency. The awarding agency adds, um, they, uh, they authorize and um, de well, we'll say obligate and deobligate grant funding in our system. The only thing you can add is a new PMS account number if you're receiving a new, um, a new award with a new funding agency. You don't have to. Um, insert, you don't add by grant document numbers. Okay, so, okay, so I must answer that for you. <laughs> you welcome, Michael. All right, so who sends notification to grantee when an FFR is the link is ready to be completed? Our system, let me see, we do have notifications and they come from the system, but I believe the only notifications we send out is the delinquent notification. Okay, and that. And when and one thing I do want to say, when it comes to the FFR, we get this a lot and, and it comes back to say, well, that's not my grant, that's my grant. We don't know that. We sending notifications to everyone who has access to that account for the for the FFR. So when it's delinquent, we'll send it out then. So Miss Annette, um, Annette, I hope I answered your question. Okay, so please, we, another question regarding IDC, do we need to add all accumulation Accumulate data. Um, I'm not sure of this question. You welcome, Annette. I'm not sure of this question, so I'm gonna need ACF to help me. Another regarding IDC, do we need to add all? I think are they referring to indirect costs? And I can't see who is asking. The it's, it look like Basin, Basin, Michael. Okay, let me see if I can take them off mute. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that way we can ask a little. I assume okay. you're talking about indirect cost rate. I'm going to find you allowed to talk. All right, so <laughs> you should be able to unmute yourself, Michael. Basin. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding indirect cost. Uh, can you scroll up a little bit? Uh, sorry, down, down. Yes. Now we have two, two line. Uh, do we put in the first line the existing quarter and other line for the, the, the rest? Or we put accumulated indirect cost we have 
And are you saying it's based on your um, the budget that you submitted originally and you're now adding this in your FFR as far as reporting? This is what you charge to your indirect cost rate? Michael, I just wanted to confirm that's what you're referring to. Okay. Is that what you is that what you're referring to? You're saying like I so we submitted a budget that has indirect cost rate in our line items um, as far as budget wise. And when you're doing now, you're reporting it saying, hey, we spent money um, in this, and you're saying in line one, you're putting in the type of an error cost rate. And then um, line one, we put it for the existing quarter. OK, for the existing quarter. Yes. And line two for the rest or the accumulated. Correct. Oh, so that is, um, TJ, is that how the, this one works for the next I thought it was depending on um hold on let me <laughs> um i thought it was depending on how many and i thought all of it was cumulative so if you had um more than one indirect expense rate mm -hmm. you would use um let me edit the report real quick sorry so i can go see the drop down menus you would enter uh you know that provisional so if this is not your final one maybe it's your provisional predetermined or you'll fix, you'll do it that. But my understanding, I think it's all cumulative mm -hmm. um, for, um, but for, for that quarter, for that quarter, for, for that quarter. Yeah. 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 So that's what I thought. Okay. So yeah, it's cumulative for that quarter. So you're just putting it in. So then line two would just be maybe additional costs because they're both having the same drop down. I'm showing. Yes. Um, they do. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. So does in, that make sense to you, Michael? In, so in indirect cost, we put for the quarter only. Yes, the cumul cumulative quarter for that quarter that you're reporting. <coughs> if that's the quarter that you're reporting, in, yes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. Um, wait, do you think we have some more questions in the chat? Um, do you still need to submit a final report if you were granted an extension? Okay, so um, for an extension, if the extension should be in the payment management system. So for instance, um, if I went back to the um, this right here, you, the screen, and it's based off of the, um, what happened to my one thing? Okay, we go. <laughs> based off this award date, um, this due date, if they have an extension, we can only go by what's in the payment management system. So in this case, you would need to contact your grants officer and ask them when will the extension be granted. So we will pull that data then. Until we have that data, we don't know that you receive an extension. So Feline, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Feline, I hope that answered your question. And so just to keep in mind, we don't do no cost extensions for formula guarantees, um, just for the discretionary ones. Um, so maybe this person's asking for okay. <laughs> discretionary yeah, for the formula ones, the mandatory. I have another question. This is Besson. Okay. Yes, Mr. Michael. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in cash, uh, cash management. Okay. Can you go back to the first screen? Here. No, no, first screen. Yes. Here. Yes, up, up, up. Mm -hmm. Can you go back to menu? Mm -hmm. Okay, federal financial report. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Uh, back, please. Uh, payment. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Do you know where to find cash report? That's why I the, can't open it now. Which report? Quarter cash report. The quarter cash report, but you don't, ACF doesn't do cash reports in our system. Yeah, okay. Right, uh, if, uh, as of April 1st last year, um, HHS grantees no longer do the federal cash report in payment management system at all. Well, because of that, I'm wondering why it's not open it for me. Why what's not opening for you? Yeah. No, no, no. You're saying you wondering why it's not opening. What no, is no, not I opening? am wondering why it's not opening. Now you answer my question. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a requirement. Like RTJ was saying, it's not a requirement. So it's not going to open for you because you don't need to do it. So that's yes. That's that's a plus. So it's less one less form for you to complete. Yeah. All right. And I know we have ran out of time. We're actually over. Um, if you all have any more questions or burning questions that you need TJ to answer, um, give you a couple of more minutes um to drop it in the chat. If not, then we will um, go ahead and end here, but this recording will be on the, well, actually not on the website. I will send it to the listserv along with the PowerPoint presentation. Many thanks about presentation and we are waiting for the material. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, TJ. We really appreciate you coming and presenting to us. Again, like I said, I will put this uh, recording on the listserv along with the PowerPoint presentation. If there are no other questions, we will let you all go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy your day, everyone. You too.